Okay, so let's get rid of this layer style, this bevel and emboss that we applied to our statue and also the drop shadow. You know, there's a couple of different ways to get rid of a layer style or layer effects as they're also sometimes called. But you know, usually what I do is I just bring my cursor over top of the layer that has the layer style applied to it. I right click on the fella and then, well, we've got a couple of options here. We can copy the layer style, which by the way is really cool. I could copy the effects that I've applied to this layer and mine's grayed out right now, but then what I could do is I could go and right click on another layer and then paste the layer style. So in other words, I could copy the effects on one layer and paste them over onto another layer. Very cool. But what I'm after here is clearing the layer style. So go ahead and choose clear layer style. That gets rid of all the effects that you've applied to your layer. You can see the layers palette there. It's cleared them all out. Let's go after that white outline that I promised you quite a while ago now. So once again, I'll double click on the right side of the statue layer back into the layer style dialog box. I'm going to head down to an effect called stroke, otherwise known as outline. And what I'll do here is I want to change the color of the stroke. Notice I now have this black outline all the way around my statue, which looks kind of cool, but I'm after white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little color thumbnail. And what that does is brings us into a dialog box that we haven't seen yet. This is Photoshop's color picker window. And you know, in a minute, I'll give you a tour of this dialog box. It's very cool, but all I'm after is white at this point. So what I'm going to do is inside this sort of this color area here on the left hand side. I'm going to click up in the top left corner to select white and you'll notice I get white right off the bat there. Perfect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And you know, at this point, you might want to move your dialog box out of the way so you can see your overall layout. Maybe I'll zoom out just a little bit here. That's another cool trick. I can zoom in and zoom out while I'm still inside this dialog box, which is kind of cool. I think that looks great. I think it looks really cool. But you know, inside the layer style dialog box, I have a few other options. I could increase the thickness of my line by dragging on this size slider if I want. So maybe I want something a little bit thicker. And then we also have position on the outside on the inside, something like that. And maybe I should zoom in here so you can see the difference here. So there's inside, there's outside, or I could say the center. So ride the center between the sort of the inside of the statue and the outside. I think I like the outside there. Something like that I think looks pretty darn cool. All right, that looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK. I'm quite happy with that. And you know, let's go and apply a few other effects to one of our other layers. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and change the color of the text here, the medieval dinner. And you know, I could go into the smart object. Don't forget, this guy's a smart object. I could double click on that smart object icon and go and change it in the original file and so on. Or I could just apply a special effect to the text layer itself. Let's do that. So I'm going to double click on the right hand side of the text layer back into the layer style dialog box. And I'm not going to do anything too crazy here. All I want to do is change the color of the text. So I'm going to choose color overlay and right away all my text changes to red because that's our default color here. But once again, I'll click on this color swatch and I'm back into Photoshop's color picker. Okay, I promised you a tour of the interface here. Now, usually when people come into the color picker, they're instantly drawn to this area here on the left-hand side of the dialog box. But really it's the center, this sort of center color ramp that you want to start with inside the dialog box. So notice we have a little grab arrow there, a little slider. Grab that guy and drag up or down to find the sort of the range of colors that you want. For example, maybe I want to go into the greens for whatever reason, right? As soon as I let go, you'll see the text changes to green there. And then inside this left hand window pane, I can then choose the shade of green that I want. Maybe I could go into some of the darker greens if I like, or maybe into the lighter greens. So obviously we have darks at the bottom, lights towards the top. We have some grayish effect there over towards the left hand side of this window here. One idea that I had was making the text the same color as the statue, trying to get it close to the same color as the statue. So I could go into these grays here, maybe somewhere in here, something like that, which 
to me looks kind of cool or you know we could probably even go a little darker there maybe something like that or the other thought that I had was we could try and make the text the same color as the sky again just to sort of match it up a little bit so then in that case I'd grab my color ramp slider here in the middle of the color picker dialog box go into the blues and then try and get a blue that's sort of a similar color as my sky it's a little bit more gray than that isn't it maybe somewhere in there I'm just kind of taking wild guesses here but you get the idea I'm sure that's really what it's all about here so I come in here I set it up I think that looks pretty good click on OK and then from this point I could throw on some additional styles if I want again maybe a stroke maybe black something like this increase the thickness whatever you want right you can really go crazy here and who the heck knows maybe a drop shadow as well you could come in here set up a drop shadow again the idea here is just to sort of fiddle around and experiment and see what you can come up with and if you're sitting there not really liking what you have you can uncheck these check boxes to kind of back yourself out of what you've done here click on OK again that's all there is to it and again what I love about all this is it's all non-destructive so if I really wanted to I could strip all these effects off go all the way back to where you and I started and that's really the cool thing about layer styles layer effects here in Photoshop